all right? And now the protons bring something else back in. There's a variety of strategies. Our nerve cells do something like that, but I'll, but I'll, I'll say more about those later, okay? Sure. Okay. Um, so, receptor-mediated endocytosis. Now, this happens with the movement of fat and cholesterol in our body. Cells really like to have the energy that comes from fat. They like to have the cholesterol, as we mentioned before, so they can bake, make uh, efficient membranes. And those things have to get into the cell. It turns out that how many people have heard of LDLs? Okay. Oh, great. Okay. So LDLs are the things we think about bad cholesterol and all the things associated with that. Our body's making LDLs for a purpose. And the reason it's making LDLs is because it needs to move things into cells. LDLs carry cholesterol. They carry uh, fats. They may carry fatty acids. They may carry fat-soluble vitamins. They may carry all of these things because what happens is when the LDL binds to a cell, to a target cell, if the cell is needing those things, it will grab a hold of that LDL and it will bring the whole thing into the cell by this endo, uh, receptor-mediated endocytosis process that I talked about. As a result of that, what we have in the cell now is that LDL that has all the goodies. Once it's inside the cell, all the goodies are unpackaged and the cell uses the fat, the fat-soluble vitamins, the cholesterol, et cetera, for its own purposes, okay? This process did not require a transport protein to get across the membrane. All that had to happen was the LDL bound to it, and then the cell sort of pinched the thing inside and then dissolved all the goodies. Everybody with me? Quiet group again today. You guys are the quietest class I've ever had. All right. All right. So um, at this point, we turn our attention away from membranes a little bit, and we talk about lipids, which, of course, uh, we've mentioned before. Lipids are uh, nonpolar substances. We saw examples of lipids in, as fatty acids, as fats, and, now, and also as cholesterol. And now I'm going to talk about a few other uh, related lipids. The related lipids I'm going to talk about are the fat-soluble vitamins. There we go. Okay. The fat-soluble vitamins, I'm sure uh, almost all of you know, uh, vitamins A, D, E, and K. And you can see their functions uh, listed here. Vitamin A, of course, is the most important uh, compound in our eyes for vision. Um, vitamin A is light sensitive, meaning that its chemical bonds, it's full of double bonds, and I'll show you the structure in a minute, flip from cis to trans in the presence of light. And that flip from cis to trans is used as a way of signaling nerve cells in your retina. As a consequence of that flipping, the nerve cells send a signal to your brain saying, hey, we saw something here. And now your brain then paints the picture that you see out here in the real world. That happens because of vitamin A. If you don't have vitamin A, you go blind. And blindness is a factor in some places around the world because of, of a deficiency of vitamin A. Yes, ma'am. Light sensitive, okay. So light sensitive simply means that uh, this compound uh, chemically changes when it's exposed to light. And the chemical change is simple. It is an isomerization from a cis to a trans double bond. And I'll, sh I'll show you this in a figure in a second. And back. So it can go from cis to trans and also back from trans to cis. That's a slight movement. It's a slight motion change and a nerve cell in your retina that has that motion change is very sensitive to it so that when it gets that sense, it sends a signal to the brain saying, okay, I saw something. And the brain takes all the information from all of those retinal cells in your eye and paints the picture that you see as the world. Okay? All right. Vitamin D. Uh, vitamin D is uh, of increasing interest uh, of late. Vitamin D, uh, we know, of course, is involved in the uptake of calcium. It's necessary for strong bones. We're also finding increasingly that vitamin D is, uh, has some very important uh, properties of promoting health, including anti-cancer properties. So one of the strong pieces of advice now is that people get um, sufficient quantities of vitamin D and at least a small amount of sunshine because to make active vitamin D, as we shall see, you have to have the ultraviolet light inside of sunshine. I do not underline, do not recommend tanning booths, and I'll talk more about those later, okay? Vitamin E. Vitamin E is the vitamin about which we know the least. Um, 
It's not completely clear what happens in a deficiency of vitamin E. Um, but one thought uh, is that vitamin E is a uh, molecule that provides what's called antioxidant protective uh, effects. Increasingly, we are discovering that um, oxidation is a very, very, uh, um, or I should say uncontrolled oxidation is a very uh, drastic, very um, detrimental thing for cells to have. When cells do oxidation, they want to be able to control it under their terms. And if they can't control it under their terms, then there are problems, and we'll talk about those. Vitamin E may help prevent that uncontrolled oxidation from occurring. Vitamin E is frequently associated with membranes, and it may actually serve to help protect membranes against oxidative damage. The last one, vitamin K, uh, is a very important vitamin for um, blood clotting. So when I talked earlier about the um, uh, blood clotting process, vitamin K plays a critical role in that process, and I won't say more uh, about that here. Okay, well, if we look at these vitamins very briefly, again, you're not going to memorize the structures, but I think it's helpful to look at these structures and see what's going on. We look here at um, vitamin A, and vitamin A looks like this. It's got a ring, it's got a double bond in the ring, and it's got a, a, a side chain. It's a little hard to see on this figure, but that's a double bond, a double bond, a double bond, a double bond. So the way this guy is drawn here, and this compound is called retinol, you should know that. Retinol is the chemical form of vitamin A. Okay, Retinol, R-E-T-I-N-O-L. There are three important chemical forms of vitamin A. The one that's commonly stored is called retinol, and that's what you see here. It's frequently found in your liver. That's the most common storage place for it. There's a slightly oxidized form of that called retinal. So retinol has an alcohol at the end of it. Retinal has an aldehyde at the end of it. The third form is retinoic acid. It's not shown on here, but if I were to convert this retinol, I'm sorry, this retinal to a carboxyl group, that would be retinoic acid. Now, each of these has functions in the body. The retinol is a storage form. It's kept in your liver so that as the body needs the other forms, it's released. The second form, retinal, is the form that's found in vision. It's found in your eyes. And what you see in this reaction is the isomerization, that is the change from the trans to the cis bond, that's occurring when that molecule encounters a photon of light. The retinoic acid, which is not shown, um, is a form that has a very, very important role in development. So as development proceeds uh, for a cell, uh, retinoic acid plays a role in that process. And we won't talk about that here. Now, I want to tell you a brief story about vitamin A. Vitamin A is kind of cool. So you see this change in structure. You're going from something that looks like a straight chain to something that has a bent chain. And that bending that I described is very, very important for uh, the signaling in, your, in your, your, the nerves of your eyes so that uh, your brain knows what's going on. One photon makes it here. Another photon makes it go back to where it was. And so if we think about this, we can literally think of this guy, if this is my arm, Okay? We can think of this being in the all-trans form. We get a photon of light that makes the cis bond, and it does this. So this is a very different shape than this is, and that has very important effects, as I said, on the nerve cells. Well, there's a very interesting phenomenon that goes on in bacteria that uses this compound. Bacteria have a protein called bacteriorhodopsin, and it contains, in the middle of it, vitamin A. Okay. Why do bacteria need vitamin A? They don't have eyes. Okay? Well, they don't have eyes. That's definitely true. But when you take bacteria rhodopsin, what you discover is bacteria rhodopsin is a membrane protein, and it has a little chamber, kind of like something could move through it. Okay? So we talked about glucose moving through a chamber in the cell wall. Bacteria rhodopsin has a chamber inside of it. In the very middle of that, here's this molecule of vitamin A. For bacteria that have this protein, you put them in light, and here's what vitamin A does. Doink, 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 doink. Okay? They don't do the sound effects, but they do the, they do the doinking. Okay? Now, each time bacteria rhodopsin does this, okay, it grabs a proton from the inside, and it kicks it outside. It comes back down, grabs, kicks, grabs, kicks, grabs, kicks. Okay? 
you want to think about like a football, kicking a football, same sort of phenomena. Somebody asked earlier, how do you get the protons out? Well, if you're a bacterium, one of the ways you could do it is shine light on it. And when you shine light, it starts kicking protons out of itself. Those protons can make a gradient that might be used to bring in some, some sugar that the bacterium might need or some other thing as well. So that gradient is very useful. Everybody with me so far? Yeah. As the light comes into the chamber, it kicks out vitamin A? Or vitamin A is kicking protons out. So oh. as, as light encounters the vitamin A in the chamber, vitamin A is going doink. When it does, that proton just got kicked out. Another photon, it's back here, grabs another proton. Each time it encounters a photon, it's kicking another proton out. OK? Yes, sir. Um, what's the advantage of doing that only in the presence of light? Say, uh, there's, is it like a, the advantage is light is the energy source. Okay. So light is the energy source, and that's the bottom line. of I'm going to tell you a cool trick. Okay. Without light, you have no energy source. This guy's just going to sit here. It's not going to pump any protons. So the bacterium is happy when it sees light, because, or when it gets light, because it's kicking protons out. Well, we'll talk later in the class um, about the fact that our, our mitochondria do a very similar thing, but they don't use light as the energy source. They use uh, a, a, a gradient of, um, uh, of electrons. Okay? We'll talk about the electron transport system. And the electron transport system allow, allows for the kicking out of protons outside the mitochondrion. When those protons get out, you have the same thing as we had before. We have a high concentration of protons outside the mitochondrion. We have a low concentration in, and guess what wants to come back in? The protons. In the mitochondrion, when they come back in, that's how mitochondria make ATP. So they kick the protons out, then they use the gradient coming back in to make ATP. Very cool. Now, my question is this. What if you took that bacterial rhodopsin and you stuck it in the mitochondrion of one of those transparent fish that you have in the, in the pet stores. You guys know what I'm talking about? You can see through the fish, right? I'm serious here. Think about this, OK? This is a very doable kind of a thing. It's a very doable experiment, OK? You can take, you can put this in the mitochondrion of these transparent fish, and then you put the fish in light. What do you suppose is going to happen? Well, now, instead of relying on oxidative energy, which is where the electrons come from, now you have light energy kicking protons out of the mitochondria of these fish. And when the protons come back in, ATP is made. You have a photosynthetic fish. People laugh. I laughed the first time I thought the idea. I thought, that's kind of cool. I've actually consulted with people about it who study mitochondria. And they said, you know, it might work. Now I don't have a lab. I don't set up and do that. But I thought I, I threw this idea out to anybody. If you go out and you make a, you make a transparent Photosynthetic fish, okay, I want a postcard or something out of it, okay? I want to know about this. But I think it's feasible. I think it, I think it could work. Now, it won't be photosynthetic in the sense that it, uh, uh, plants are photosynthetic, that, that not only do they grab energy from light and they make glucose, okay? They have ways of taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Uh, a fish wouldn't have that. So you would have to give it a carbon source. But you would have to feed it very, very little. All you would have to do is give it the carbon that it needs, and then it could go off and do its thing. OK. Fun stuff. What's that? Uh, vitamin A absorbs uh, maximally in the um, uh, shorter wavelengths. So at about uh, 350 nanometers, which is getting into the, the, the closer of the UV. Yeah. You probably would have a lot of damage. Um, and I think what you would have to do is you probably would have to d give it a little bit of light at a time. Um, the, what the person I spoke to about it who knew something about mitochondria said you'd probably build up such an intense gradient, you'd probably fry the fish if you weren't careful. So you'd have to do it kind of carefully. But, you know, keep your fish in the dark most of the time. It's time for light. The fish goes, ah. Yeah. What's the mechanism of what? It's just movement. It's just movement. So it's just pushing it out. There's, there's no hand. I'm using my hand as if it's doing it. But just the movement is, is sufficient. Yep. OK, so kind of cool. All right, there is vitamin A. Let us talk about vitamin D. Vitamin D is uh, actually made from cholesterol. One of the reasons you need cholesterol is to make vitamin D. And vitamin D, I mean, uh, vitamin D, as you see, there's cholesterol. Vitamin D ends up going down to this thing. But you can see the starting materials 